Video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. Strap in boys, we're in for a wild one. It's Christmas time again. We're officially several days in December, so of course naturally the 1990s classic Home Alone series is sure to be popping up in your recommendations soon. And I thought I was kind of done with the series. I didn't want to tackle the originals like everyone seemingly has always done, so around this time last year I made a video called the Home Alone sequels we don't talk about. If you haven't seen it, I'd recommend checking it out after this video. But while I figured I'd covered all the bases with Home Alone 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, apparently soon after I released that, I was told there was another. Something so daring and off-brand that it was a crime that I omitted it. So here we are, 12 months later, with the dreadfully photoshopped poster design that is Bone Alone. And yes, that's the actual title. It's not some kind of parody of a certain type of nature you can actually find online. It's real. Though in some places it's called Alone for Christmas. Boring. You know, from The Asylum, that iconic company that totally doesn't feel ominous as text at all. This obviously isn't part of the official series, but how bad could it possibly be? See, it's got the white snow, the Christmas music, and oh god, yeah, the animals talk in this film. This can only go one of two ways. Also, we're going to be rating this film just like we did last year to see if it's actually got the elements of a good Home Alone movie. You'll never guess the answer. So after a brief scene with terrible dubbing and awkward editing, we're greeted with the opening sequence which is essentially just one big animation to explain the dog's relationship so they don't have to recreate it in live action. It's efficient, I guess. With all the stock cartoony sound effects and minimal framework. Seriously, there's like no animation. Apparently this has a solid 5 star rating on Amazon Prime. We'll see about that. So finally we reach our actual family and wait, wait, is that the dad from Wizards of Waverly Place? Oh buddy, this was in 2013. After the series had finished? Oh no, his poor career. I heard something downstairs. Columbus, it isn't Santa. And there it is folks, the dogs can talk but the movie doesn't have the budget to CGI their mouths very well. Get used to the choppy cuts to these artificial face shots. Ugh. So the puppy hears something downstairs and senses danger. The oldie follows and they eventually investigate to find a doll in one of the presents, though the old one is blamed for the mess over the puppy actually doing the action. And the family all sporadically woke up to witness the aftermath apparently. The old one's name is Bone by the way, hence why it's Bone Alone. You'd think it'd be the puppy based on the poster, but you'd be disappointed. <laughs> so now, some undefined time later, the mum is working out. The boy is on his flip phone in 2013, calling this the worst Christmas ever and describing the tree incident as... It was savage. Opened all the presents. <sighs> and the dad says Bone can't join them for visiting Grandma for Christmas because he's been too wild lately. But Dad... You can really feel the emotion in these child actors. I usually wouldn't put all too much on them, but their competition here is literally Macaulay Culkin. Like, come on, a little bit of emotion, please. I do like, though, that the dad also wants them not to use the shower because the pipes and knobs are faulty. He doesn't really logically help Bone since he's not in the room, but at least we know. So Columbus, that's the puppy, by the way, apologizes to Bone and he says it's no big deal until he realizes it's more than just a timeout and says, I'm going to miss the big turkey dinner. Again, can really feel the emotions in this. Don't worry, it seems to be a trait with everyone across the board apparently, because Columbus 2 has his dreadful delivery moment with... Intruder! And that intruder is this guy. I actually like this story beat. Sure, it's taken straight from the original, but it's like good storytelling to me. Anyway, he's overly jolly and a little bit weird, and the mum tells him that they're leaving for Christmas Day. He's Jake, by the way. And what do you know, he's a bad guy. In charge of a couple of kids, I guess. Forget a dynamic duo, this is a team of three. And they're both the comic relief. This seems to be a running theme in the sequels of too many villains. I don't really see the appeal. Hey! That has got to be the worst editing and acting I think I've ever seen. And I watched Bulk. 
So the family are driving in the car, and I think the editor just forgot to take out the blue screen behind them. What is this background? Are they supposed to be driving on the sky or something? There's also more of this terrible editing mashup between Bone looking straight ahead when the daughter talks and then being off to the side on the master shot. You can't unsee it once you notice. And a lot of times these extra shots have no real spatial connection in the scene. It's everywhere in this movie. So Bone is dropped off at a kennel run by this guy. He's just a weirdo dog person. It'd be interesting if he was another villainous type to spice up the plot, but no. They make a lot of jokes with him, calling the weather hot, saying his wife's name was Bone, liking dogs like his brother who he hates sometimes, and discounting money the wrong way, but they're all just terrible jokes. And they really drag out this scene. You can take that and you can, you can plug it into that, the worldwide internet, you know, contraption. What year is it? Isn't it 2013? The internet and live streaming really isn't that new. Eventually, after all the red flags, the dad drops Bone off. Oh boy. Bone attempts to talk to the others and one tells him to... Go away! Come on, let's leave him alone. And that's the end of that scene. The family drive and stop for hot chocolate and get to see Bone on the live stream while the dogs talk about how the anxious one lost his bite by letting thieves into the house in the prologue and ruining Christmas for the family. He's a bad watchdog. And judging by the smell, they recognize it was Jake and that the same thing will happen to Bone's place. It's finally home alone time. You have to stop them. Stop them? How? I can't call 911. Oh, even when I try to get into the plot, the voice acting is just too dreadful to keep me immersed. They also immediately follow it up with... And we don't have thumbs! Why do I even bother? And apparently even after this film's done, there's more Home Alone to come, cause get this, Disney Plus are making a reboot now, with Macaulay Culkin back and some newbies like Archie Yates. We'll talk about it more later, but seriously, I'm not done with this. So after some stupid hijinks and more bad jokes, Bone sneaks out pretty easily through an open door. Meanwhile, Columbus, who was left in the car, tries to save Bone by, get this, setting off the parking brake and crashing it to break a window. The animation, by the way, is just... Oh, it's just so beautiful, isn't it? So Columbus has now hopped on the back of a truck and is somehow spotted by the daughter as he leaves. As Columbus rides back, Bone is running on foot and then on skateboard, apparently. All right, this doesn't come back. And another running theme with these bad movies is just the terrible toy-like soundtrack. It's happened in other sequels, but when does this ever work well? It doesn't hear. So Bone spooks the thieves with car alarms by pouring at the tires, apparently. What? and he gets to work on his traps. Digging into the wood, getting mousetrap glue, and constantly just giving us one-liners for each and every trap piece. This will be a washout. This will help them stick around. Hope this sticks with them. How did you turn the Home Alone montage lame? None of this was foreshadowed earlier, there was no real time to think on these traps, and it all just kinda happens. Why does Bone have this level of intelligence anyway? And now the main event finally begins. The thieving. Featuring the smart one Jake, the dumb one at the back, and... The, the middleman. I, I, don't, I don't feel what stands him apart from the trio, you know? Bad characters, right off the bat, that's what they are. So what is the very first trap of the film? Is it a slippery stairway, or a burning doorknob, a brick to the face, or a gunly illusion? No! It's just a hole! A hole. I think I know. Ah, ah, ah. Step bro, help, I'm stuck. This middle guy, by the way, has the worst acting of the three by far with how little he can actually emote. And while the trio spend a million hours trying to pull him out, because the guy won't move his arms out of the way, Bone then comes along with a frying pan. Ah, ah, who's doing that? Honestly, the sound design makes it sound like he's mangling all of his bones, like a horror parody of Home Alone. Up next is... Slippery Soap for Slippery Folk. Whereby the thieves find a convenient ladder in a window, and as Dumbo climbs up it, Bone magically spews the ladder, isn't seen, and Dumbo falls down. And that's it. I mean, so far, even when we're at the good bit, it's just so lazy and boring. So moving on, Columbus is spotted by the owners of the truck, and it's Santa, who are now set on getting him home. This little one in back needs to be with family. 
god, they played this cheesy. I wonder what the message is. Diesel, the other dog on the truck, meanwhile, is much more confrontational. <laughs> he hears of the thieving plot that I guess Columbus heard through the iPads? They didn't really show that very well. And Diesel tells of his hardcore watchdog jugular biting days. And then the real family starts to catch up. You have yeah, but I think you lost your kids in the back there. So with this being a conundrum, what is there to do? Well, Diesel then pulls out a spiked plank and decimates the family car to spin it out. What? Oh yeah, because that's how physics work. You thought the budget for the CGI jewels wasn't enough? You haven't seen nothing yet. Time for trap sequence number two. Jake sneaks into a window, steps on some sticky pads, and falls onto the floor. Quality. He's stuck with a wire trail until he just plucks it off, and then he lets the others in. Wouldn't the window be just fine? Dumbo finds some precarious jewelry, and remember that candlestick piece from before in the montage? Yeah, somehow Bone, I guess, ignited it entirely, and it stayed hot for like 20 minutes since the trap was made. So Dumbo grabs it, throws it away, and then Jake just magically catches it through like several walls and a floor, and then he knocks out the middleman with like a shot that's clearly just like, it's just in reverse or something. What? What is this terrible slap together editing? How badly do you have to film a sequence for the editor to have to stitch things up like this? Wow. Alarm. Really. Thanks. Like, this is worse than amateur filmmaking. And as a finale, Bone threatens them with a chandelier trap, which is really dragged out. I mean, there's like a million scenes of this same statue shot. Middleman wakes up only when it's convenient for the plot, and they dodge it. Why do these VFX shots always come with this artificial motion? It doesn't flow at all. Carolers are there at the door in the middle of the day. They disappear the moment the door shuts, and Jake then calls in for backup. Okay. Either way, it's another villain to the mix, and an expert. Someone even the others are now afraid of. Here he is, stealing dogs to claim the rewards. He's saying jokes, but forget about it. They're not very good. I need a break, I swear. You know what this kind of reminds me of? Mouse Hunt, with Lee Evans and the guy who voices Timon. That was all about chasing a mouse, and that did slapstick traps right. They even brought in an expert in that film a couple of times with some crazy results. Anyway, back to this. <laughs> the spare tire is a little thing, but it's a big thing. How does that even happen? And and they drag this out with like this not paying attention cliche for like a full minute and I mean, it's how did it only make it that far? Oh, I, oh. As I trudge through this movie, if you haven't already, do consider subscribing. You know all of this. And on Twitch today, about an hour after this comes out, we're doing the November trailer showcase. Watching live all of the trailers that came out in the last month, reacting to them, analyzing them, just making YouTube content in live form. So come see us for that soon. Yeah. Happy Christmas. You filthy animal. There's still like another six videos coming out, so it's not not the end at all. So dog catcher Quentin arrives, demanding sixty dollars over fifty dollars and the rest of Middleman's burrito. It's a chimichanga. Who composed this scene? Have they ever heard of context and being good at their job? Jake then looks at the camera as he talks to Quentin and he rants about dog scars he got and overdrags this one story about the mental scar of being in a plane crash with endangered rabid poodles. Okay. So with all this experience, what's Quentin's big trap plan? Fishing with a steak. Not even moving from the couch or anything. This ain't no mouse hunt. And during this, the dumb one needs to pee, bringing a random magazine with him because it's still the 90s apparently, and Bone hooks the steak onto him instead. Don't ask the logic of how he did it without any movement on the rod, or where the string went in this shot, or how the dumb guy doesn't notice the steak in his pan. And then they start yanking on him for a very, very long time. If this dude was some kind of genuine comic, then they could have really done something with this, you know? Some slapstick faces, an over-the-top crashing on the table or something. But no, we get this instead. <laughs> Terrible dubbing and all. Dude looks at the camera, doesn't call out to the guys at all, finally grips onto a table that's clearly loose, and then crashes a bookshelf onto himself. And that's it. What a terrible, uncreative trap. Quentin then comes out with a taser rod, which he never thought of before, I guess, and looks around in boxes for bones. What? He approaches that same dull call from before, and then... Oh, 
I mean, jeez, why does this film have like a setting of no intensity or maximum? This is just ridiculous. It's not even delivered in a good slapstick way, you know, like in number two. It's just surprisingly explosive sometimes, and then it's just as quick as one, because that's the end of Quentin. Uh, uh, there's barely a gag in this. Now, sometime later, I guess, Bone drops a singing dog into a laundry basket, luring the middleman into the laundry chute and trapping him. All the while, we hear this singing for the next few minutes on repeat to bleed our ears out. And Bone finishes it off with, I'm not kidding here. Huh. One pointy lawn dog. <gasps> oh. You know, this would really translate better if you didn't immediately cut to the clearly unharmed backside of the dude. Sometimes I think the editor just tries to make it work with what they got, but maybe they're just as clueless as everyone else. Or it's all the director's doing. Dumbo steps on some flour, that's that trap. Oh, and he also puts hot sauce on his face with a towel. And Jake steps on Lego, classic, which somehow leads him to fall onto a bed? All right. He now has squeaky footsteps, which honestly isn't the worst gag in the world if they tried to do a little bit more with it, you know, make him look ominous with the squeaky thing going against him. They don't try anything. It just gets annoying. It's very early on in the film still. Dumbo heads into the shower because he's never heard of a sink. Bone sneaks in incredibly slowly and traps him in the shower. And the water doesn't stop because the pipes don't work, remember? But sure, that one ball in the hole will plug up the entire thing. Wait, is that just a picture of a broom? What? Jake finds the middleman in the chute, removes the dart, and they bless us with... I just got skewered, and... Oh. This is the character trait of the third thief. Was it worth it? That Jingle Bell song is still going on, by the way. Yeah, I feel ya. So Bone continues with his impromptu traps by now placing a grill beneath the middle thief, again with artificial VFXy movements on the fire, cause of course there is. We'll come back to that later. Oh god, I swear these mouth animations just get worse over time. I'm starting to enjoy how bad it is. Columbus is listing things he wants for Christmas, but most of all, he wants... I want my family to have a safe and happy holiday. Wow, that's a surprise. That's actually one of the pieces needed to make a good Home Alone film. Make it all about family. Pretty much all the real sequels missed out on this. But here, they got it. The dogs want their family together and the family want their dogs back. Shame literally everything else is in shambles at this point. Also, the family learn that Bone is missing too now. Jake gets the middleman through the laundry chute and... <laughs> This dude is literally a worse actor than the kids. Also, was that supposed to be a clever reference? It wasn't one of them. Dumbo's still in the shower, the others corner bone, and suddenly Dumbo's underwater now. That was quick. And... Oh, I feel it kind of loses its flair after a while, you know? It's got that shake, the bad scream, the lack of imagination, the terrible stitch job. It's just kind of running through the motions at this point, isn't it? And Bone is put in the cupboard. Time for a success montage, all with poppy lyrical music. Way to try to force content where there isn't one. Jake spends a full minute on shoes here, by the way. And then the music is stopped by the doorbell. It's Santa delivering Columbus, of course. Jake preps to attack them, somehow, despite there being two of them and another dog, and they leave. And the dogs reunite in the cupboards. Meanwhile, the family are talking about the dogs. Because it, this, this is a dog film, if you can't pick that up. They're family. And family always comes first. Gee, I really wonder what the messaging of the film is, guys. Is show, don't tell not a thing in this universe? So now Diesel is missing and Santa's only just noticed and the thieves have succeeded. Jake, however, isn't satisfied. Oh, I know they're gonna die. I just wanna be there when it happens. Now go get them! And on this one forced point alone, the plot just falls apart. Because of this, the dogs get free, Dumbo apparently teleports between the house and the van and Jake rushes back to the house, forcing the others to find them. Dumbo searches boxes, because we're not done with that bit yet, though it's not even played as a bit. Jake mistakens dog toys for the dogs, and the middle guy finds treats for Santa on the mantle. Uh, but wait, if the family are gone for the week, then they just left out milk to go moldy and for the cookies to go hard? What? What is even going on at this point? And as he enjoys the treat, Columbus now manages to wrap rope around his ankles, 
unnoticed and they propel him up the chimney. Hey, this is at least the most creative trap so far. The execution though is still just pretty terrible. There's fake walls with a bad green screen job and they don't even acknowledge the hair. Like, come on, they almost did something right. And then they turn on the fireplace. They just really wanna cook this guy apparently. And with almost a decent trap idea, how do they finish it up? What's this guy's character trait again? Uh, Dumbo's then here struggling to grab the damn dog and... Jake meanwhile is ready to fight Bone with his fists uh, and Bone retorts by, my god, turning on the treadmill and flipping forks onto it. Where did he get them? Why is Jake also bad at acting? And why is he telling him to stop like a human being? And then Jake just freaks out and jumps out the window. What is happening now? Oh, but we're not done yet. Dumbo is caught on some obvious string trap. He's clearly at the bottom of the staircase until he's not. He's dragged through the house, apparently bringing a door with him now. Thank you for the random VFX shake again. And he's strung upside down in the garage. Also, Jake reverse looks up to catch a lampshade with his head, also in reverse. Like, how do you mess this up in filming? And the sound of it? Like, did the dog bake this? While I'm using this as a segue, if you want something made of quality, then look no further than the Ridge Wallet. It's sleek, industrial, can hold up to 12 cards, and plenty of room for cash too, in a new modern design. Garnering over 40,000 five-star reviews, so you know it's good. And it comes with a lifetime warranty to keep you prepped for good. So use my code at ridge.com slash daz, and use the code daz to get 10% off. That's an easy enough code to remember, right? Just daz. It's easy. Now, back to this dog production. So with literally now just five minutes left of the film, the dogs celebrate with each other, middleman pops up, Diesel comes in for the rescue just by running into the guy, so much for all the jugular talk, and the thieves are all wrapped up together. I legitimately have no idea why he's suddenly stopped speaking English at this point. Did he just go mad? His actions certainly seem to say so. Whatever. The family return to his rabble. They find their dogs and it's a happy ending. Guess Grandma's in for a lonely Christmas this time around, because this is where the family is settled. Oh, and now there's a random police officer on the scene. Yikes. The boy describes the events and calls it the best Christmas ever, finishing his arc, but wait, didn't he say... So one of my dogs traveled cross-country with Santa... How did he know that? Spoilers? And it's happy ending time. Ew. Also, more terrible cutting trying to tell a story. That wasn't us, that's literally how it cuts in the movie. And Santa returns to them randomly. Turns out, they're the grandparents. They just weren't aware of the new house and the new dog. You're seriously telling me the parents didn't recognize their own parents' dog, Diesel? Or that Bone and him never met before? Like, what is this? And so they react to weak CGI snow. The dogs are ecstatic to be related to Santa. And that's the end of the film. No Amazon. I don't think I will be watching K9 Christmas. This surprise surprise was a terrible Home Alone film. I mean, let's just look at the core elements of what was needed. The setup behind the events give us a big yet generic new house to explore with just some Christmas props and faulty pipelines to use for traps. The circumstances behind being Home Alone comes from just running back home to save a robbery, which is slightly new, but not that crazy. The villains are incredibly bad, both from a dynamic perspective and personal personality, as well as just the acting. Remember the screams and howls of Harry and Marv hilariously reacting to each trap? Those were the good old days. Where did those days go? Not to mention the acting on the dogs allows for so little content for us. There's all these terrible shots of paws doing human things because they have to. There's no real sense of fear or tension as they act because they literally just can't emote. And then there's the jokes, fart jokes, over explaining, dragging them out, cliches. They're just awful. And even the visual stuff just pales in comparison. Is this supposed to be compared with the chicken moment? Or how's about the motifing through the whole film? What was foreshadowed in the early moments of the film? In the original, the whole first half of the film sets up different props and elements to return, now in a new context. Here, we have the doll. 
there are reindeer props outside and we get one pipe line. Magical. Also, the whole element of childhood wonder is lost when your protagonists are dogs with no attachment to freedom of alone time, and even with the jolly puppy, nothing really comes across with it beyond being a nuisance. The traps are terrible, as we've already practically seen. I mean, they're practically non-existent, really. And what was the messaging of the film? Okay, sure, they got that right. Family values, maturing as people, uh, dogs, and brewing relationships. Uh, kinda. Not really helping a third party about the values of Christmas or family or friendship though, so... <laughs> really, everything pretty much just falls flat on its face. And it's a shame, because it could have done really well. Talking Dogs isn't always a disaster, but here we are with another Home Alone shambles. You'd have to rework everything to make this one work, but I think I'd rather just watch some Mouse Hunt instead. Summit with some real comedians to milk the moment, real slapstick with some genuine creative moments, and a real plot line that comes together and brews something more over time. And hey, they do all that with the animals staying silent in this one. I guess something about the 90s really kept up that magic. The 2020 way now is to reboot the thing on Disney+, Plus. so I guess next year we'll do a Home Alone is Coming Back video. Heck, it might even be here by this time next year. Filming started last February, but was paused like everything else. And it's said to bring back Harry, Marvin, Buzz, as well as Macaulay Culkin, and said to feature a kid stealing from another couple and trying to survive, an odd reverse plot point. We'll see how all of that turns out for them. They haven't got a lot of standards to beat looking at everything else. But for now, I guess I'll just leave it here. My name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. Whew, I need a break after this one. It was bad, then it got good somewhere in the middle, and then it got bad again. Ugh. This is what it feels like to watch Bone Alone. You know what the biggest tragedy is of this uh, this film? It's the fact that they never went back to save Bubbles, just stuck in a cage that owned by Quentin the dog catcher. Never comes back. And the dog guy being like, I lost your dog. Never comes back. And how about the fact that in the prologue, the thieves had a bone to distract the dog, and in this, they just didn't. They didn't even try. Uh, this film. This film.